The sponsor of today's video is Reroll.co, but more on them later. What is the most useless magical item you've ever given to your party? Part four. If you have a useless item you want us to know about, put it in the comments below. Trust me, we're always reading them. I gave my players a stone of purpose. The purpose of this stone is to tell the last person who touched it its purpose telepathically. This led to an endless circle of this stone telling the barbarian, the purpose of this stone is to inform the last person that touched it that the purpose of this stone is to, and so on and so on. The barbarian began chucking this stone at everyone he hated the big bad evil guy, the rogue, the barkeep. This stone was beamed at so many people and the barbarian just scooped the stone back into his bag of holding after he did so to avoid touching it, cursing the person who was last smacked with it with an endless voice in their mind stating, the purpose of this stone is to inform that the last person that touched it, that the purpose of this stone is to, until the barbarian decides to throw it at the next person who angers him. I love it so much. Hey everyone, Brian here, bringing you today's sponsor, Reroll.co. Many of us in the world want to see our D&D characters come to life in a variety of art styles, but not all of us are good at drawing. Fortunately, our friends at Reroll are here to help. Reroll is a character building app that allows you to build your D&D character in an 8-bit pixel art style using the 5th edition SRD content, while giving them a name, a brief biography, items that you can customize yourself, pets, and much more. With a growing selection of new races and other ways to customize your character, this app just keeps on giving. The best part is that it works on web browsers as well as iOS and Android. So desktop users, you got in, baby. I've been playing with it for about an hour or so myself, making characters for future games, but there is one that you might recognize from a certain D&D stream we did. Yep, that's Greg, or number 22, the half-orc barbarian in half-plate mithril armor with his long pike. Welcome to the 8-bit pixel world, eh, old pal? Anyway, make sure to check out Reroll, and if you do, be sure to show us your creations as we'd love to see them. Now, let's get right back into the meat and taters of this video, shall we? I recently gave my players a mug enchanted with evocation magic that they took to be identified. The wizard student who cast identify on it was an immature boy who begged for one of them to drink from it without explanation. <laughs> the cleric caved and agreed. They found out it was the mug of moaning. A mug that, when you drank from it, would moan and sigh like it was really enjoying the whole experience. The Ring of Frogs told this one a few different times, it'll always be one of my favorites. Our DM got tired of us constantly asking for some unique magical item, so he ended up giving us a ring of frogs. When activated, it would create a 1d4 small, useless frog with no attacks that had a low enough int slash whiz that using them as remote cameras through spells was useless. So we got creative. There was a lot of things we did with those frogs. We threw them at people as a distraction. We cast spells on them. We even modified a crossbow to launch frogs, <laughs> then enlarged them as they shot, making a frog cannon. We cast explosive rune on them. We had an explosive frog cannon. It was glorious. My DM had a shop full of curos that only cost one gold, and among the items were several decks of cards, some weapons, and a box of tears. My character purchased a deck of cards with only one card in it, and my friend bought a weapon called Axe of Lightning, which strangely seemed to do nothing special. While my friend was sleeping, I drew the card, had to roll a D100, got a 46, and a lightning bolt shot out and hit my friend. The card was a homebrew item that had the same effect as a wand of wonder, so my 46 meant it cast lightning bolt, which would have dealt 8d6 to my level two friend. Needless to say, my DM changed the axe of attract lightning to reduce incoming lightning damage to one point, so I didn't accidentally fry my friend to a crisp before we could turn in our first mission. The box of tears was just an enchanted box that would always be full of freshly chopped onions <laughs> and people nearby had to pass a con saving throw or start crying every time it was opened. 
dragonborn fighter played by my friend who fancies himself as a comedian. He, the PC, was constantly flirting with everything around him. I'm talking everything, mostly because in session zero, I made the mistake of telling them that they could do just about anything as long as the dice favored them. Oh, bad idea. Dragonborn fighter, at last, rolled a nat 20. When he was flirting, with a door. Not even a full door, it was like one of those saloon swinging doors. He seduced the door so thoroughly that it gained consciousness and for the rest of the game, he had a pair of magic door shields with mean jealous streaks. Good times, good times. Pillow of Building Forts. A simple, unadorned cushion that, when left in an enclosed space, max of 100 feet squared, so basically 10 by 10 feet, and being given a command word, sleepover, slowly, around 10 minutes or so, slowly spawns additional pillows, cushions, sheets, and blankets to convert the space into an impromptu pillow fort. It had absolutely no stat value, but my players still fought each other over the privilege of using it almost every long rest. Actual hit points were lost in contests and fights to determine who was allowed in the fort that night. Rod of Ealing. A character with a strong accent gave it to them, so they thought it was a rod of healing. Nope. When you use it, it summons 2d4 completely normal eels which just flop onto the ground and most likely die of suffocation since they're not in water. After all the charges are used, the rod itself turns into an eel and again flops to the ground and suffocates. This is what happens when you complain to the DM that you don't get enough magic items. My party was asking me for a magic item for a long time, and I had to make something really quickly when they picked up a wizard's cauldron and asked if it's magical. In the end, I made it a cauldron of shit. When you put any kind of food in it, it turns to shit. But if you put shit in it, it turns into any food you want. Yeah. They never bought food rations again after they figured it out. Every morning someone just took the cauldron behind a bush and brought back breakfast. Here's my two useless legendary items that even today are told in the world. Number one, the boot. In our adventures as an evil party, we found the boot. The lore said that it had kinda a safe teleport to destination magic incorporated. In reality, it kicked so hard that whatever you kicked, it went flying cross country. When we established our evil empire, our wizard reverse engineered it, made a bunch of them, grabbed a bunch of disposable goblins gave them a helmet with cute wings on them and voila fast communication system and established number two the ever filled barrel my dm happens to start more campaigns than change his underwear so they are always really short in protest i started to make carbon copies of the same character in protest bob the strong and fair or big stupid fighter if you like it bob has an amazing story but it's for another day one day bob had a nat one on a sense motive to detect bullshit story a bard told him, the legendary beer shark. If you cut his stomach and use it to line a barrel with it, whatever liquid you put in it will turn into the best beer you will ever have. Bob firmly believed that story so much that across several iterations and dozens of campaigns, Bob ended up tracking down a creature that by his own willpower started to exist killed it, made several barrels, and then retired to be an innkeeper. Of course, with the best beer anybody will ever have. Might have been a reply and about the Ring of Teleportation. The most useless and useful magic item I've made is the buff jacket of three enigmas. Take a trench coat, make all its pockets act as bags of holding with near infinite storage, and make it so that it's been used too much that you're not actually sure what's in there. Pulling something out of it could get you lint, money, weapons, or a whale. The pickpocket was surprised. I was given a button for an army one-shot. We didn't know what it did for a while, and at first I thought it would set off the nuke we found. Unfortunately, the party didn't let me test the theory. Eventually, my friend and I were going to enter the enemy base using explosives as a distraction on the wall. The explosives didn't initially go off, so we decided to press the button. And the result? 
nut. I was given a damn nut button. Got a laugh out of us, though. I have one event. Once the party was deep inside a mage's tower, they found a hidden room inside the main bedroom, and inside, there was a locked chest. Once they opened it, there were six horns and one long smoking pipe. All magical. Turns out, there were six horns of bubbles capable of making bubbles of different colors instead of sound. Once blown, and the pipe was a magical pipe of unlimited smoke. A pipe that you can all always smoke out of, but doesn't have any special smell or taste, is really bland vapor. The set was used by the old wizard that owned the tower for vaping tricks. Two stories from one item. I was DM and party was elf wizard, dwarf cleric, and halfling rogue. Well, the rogue said his character couldn't grow facial hair and the dwarf would not drop it. Well, a few sessions later, I gave the party a homebrew item called the necklace of facial hair. The item that allowed the wearer to conjure any facial hair. Well, the rogue snatched it right up. Here's where the fun began. The rogue would start stealing stuff in broad daylight, then run down an alley, pull up his cloak, grow a large, bushy beard, and act as a homeless person. Second story is more involved. The party was hired to get rid of a goblin horde in a small mine. Well, through some heavy debate, the rogue convinced the cleric to let him sit on her shoulders and threw on a large trench coat and grew a large bushy beard. He had the wizard use some prestidigitation to build up the act. Well, when the party walked up to the camp, they were confronted by the goblin guards. The rogue, who could speak goblin, demanded to see the chief, and rolled well on intimidation and went to him. When he got there, he commanded that the goblins leave or faced his wrath. The chief started laughing, and the rogue whispered to the cleric to use inflict wounds. That chief crumbled to his knees and looked like a husk. The goblins around looked on in awe. The rogue then shouted, LEAVE! Those goblins squashed their breaths as they fled. Multiple pages of encounters gone because of one stupid magic item. Fun. I gave my party the Cup of Luke, a cursed goblet that contaminates the drink with a terrible plague, rotting the afflicted from inside out while befuddling them into thinking themselves clean. If poured into a well, it will contaminate a whole town, blighting them into slimy oblivion. My party were all lawful good or neutral good paladins, druids, and clerics. They eventually used the cup as bait for a trap to catch the big bad evil guy, a rotting demon who denied to ensorcel the whole world in seven loathsome plagues. Hey everyone, Brian here. If you liked the video, then please leave an itty bitty little thumbs up for us. Cha-ching! If you're new here, then howdy, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and ring-a-ling-a-ding-ding -ding, that bell on the right so you always know when we're posting a new video. Same goes with following us on all our respective social media platforms. From following Scott, me, or Dave on Twitter, to following us all on YouTube. Trust me, they're the two best ones you can follow us on so you can always know what we're up to. And be sure to check out our sponsor for the day, Reroll.co. Like I always say, I always test out the product first so you guys and gals get a genuine reaction. And seriously, I love things like this. I've used things like this all my life and have wanted something that has this much crap in it. Seriously, they have so many things in it, I'm probably going to be playing with it all night building characters for myself or even my girlfriend. So give it a try. That out of the way, I hope everyone is doing well. Be sure to check in on your neighbors, your friends, co-workers, families across the world, and even your pets. Between the pandemic and all the violence, trust me, we need to stay closer than ever at heart using the power of the internet, despite our physical inability to see one another. So please, for me, be sure to check up on your pets, on your friends, on everyone around you. Make sure everyone is staying happy and staying safe, that they're not going a little too crazy while they're dealing with all of this stuff by themselves. Let them know that you're still there. Lend an ear and lend a genuine amount of time. Don't just say, oh, I'll listen and don't listen. Actually talk to them. As for all the people in the comments below that have been commenting and saying all sorts of stuff to us, thank you for everything you've been saying. I read as much as I can and I reply as often as possible. And before I let you go, 
check on your pets too, please. It's really hot in some areas out there, so keep them hydrated, keep them indoors and in the shade when possible. Same goes for you guys and gals too. So stay safe, be happy, and keep looking out for one another and yourself. See you next time.